Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are talking 10.1.5 and the changes it brings to leveling. Some major, some minor, and some, well, just about time. So let's get into it. Now, I don't know if it's a sign that I'm just getting old, but I'm starting to prefer the minor updates to the major ones that we get. Sure, major ones bring a ton of new content, and that's lovely for a, about 30 seconds that I actually spend on it. But minor patches. Minor patches bring us quality of life changes that benefit us for the rest of WoW's existence. For instance, currently in WoW we are required to go back to a trainer. And they will teach us how to ride or how to fly. And it's frustrating. If you're out there in the world questing, it breaks up the flow of what you're doing. Because you want to head back, you want to get the upgrade, but it's like I'm right in the middle of something. Blizzard changed our need to go to spell and ability trainers. Now it's just downloaded into our brain like the Matrix. But yet still with riding we have to go back to the capital. That is about to change. Yes, we are going to learn Kung Fu. No, we're going to learn riding. Because yes, once you hit the various milestones, you will gain just the ability to ride. Or you'll gain leveled up riding at 30 is the only time you're going to get a quest. But this is a good one because it's an important milestone. You are now able to fly in the world of Azeroth and beyond. Therefore, it needs to be properly celebrated. So if you are Alliance, you will head off to Boralus. And if you are Horde, you will head off to Tazara Lore. There you will receive a quest and that quest will enable you to fly. But also as a little gift, they will give you either a Boralus Griffin-y thing, or if you're a Horde and you're into Zara Lore, you get a Paradraxial... you get a flying dinosaur. Yay! Now, I know what you're thinking. Yes, if you're one of those ones that has spent an absolute fortune in gold, all of those Flight Masters, you ground it out when you needed it for TBC, you ground it out when you needed it for vanilla just to buy a simple pony. Am I going to get that gold back? No. Unfortunately, the the Flight Masters Guild aren't giving out refunds for this because they've spent it all on Booty Bay timeshares. So it's gone. No money for us. And it's gone. But joking aside, this is really good news for flying. Hopefully it will just make this process of gaining, riding and flying far more simple for new players. And it doesn't mean that it's going to break up the flow of questing. And so I'm all for this. This is a brilliant change. What else can we get that is equal to this? Well, I'm not sure if it's equal, but it's still extremely good news. Allied races have had their requirements removed or lowered, I should say. Now, all you need is a level 40 character and you are able to gain the allied races. Previously, you needed all manner of different feats to be completed. You need to be level 50. Uh, they did lower the requirements a little bit, but this now basically just wipes it clean and say, hey, look, get a 40 and the allied races are yours. This one is fantastic news, and maybe actually when I think about it, better than flying. As a WoW player for some time, I've got flying on all my characters, and if I need it on a new character, I have enough gold to just purchase it and not worry about it. But I don't have the patience to do all those quest lines that were still required for the allied races. Certainly I don't have, I've got all the Horde, I don't have the Alliance, so this is great for me to get those last few allied races and maybe, just maybe, I can create my, my Kulturus fat boy I've wanted to create for so long. So the, yeah, this is great for me. Now, that's two great changes coming in 10.1.5. So what else have Blizzard done for the new players to WoW? Which really is what all of this is about, it's about retaining players. Well, Exiles Reach and beyond have had a little bit of love thrown their way. So we're used to seeing major and minor quest functionality within Dragonflight. You know, major quests have the little gold shield around them, minor quests don't. Major quests are part of the chapters, the storyline for whatever it is, whatever content you have to be doing at that moment. It lets you know what you need to achieve to go to the next level, the next stage. Well, this has now been added to Exiles. So of course you still get the gold shield, you get all of that good stuff, but now actually on the map itself you will be able to see where do I need to go next. It's all been broken down to the chapters. First up, you need to go and rescue your party, then you need to stop the dark magic, then you need to go into the dungeon and 
all of that good stuff now is there in a little journey you've got. And one of the great things about this, it means a consistent UI experience for the player. Rather than having something different spring up, as oh, like, where do I go now? I'm not quite sure. And then, oh, you're in Dragonflight near the end of your leveling experience. Like, oh, all the stuff's here on the map. Oh, that's really handy. I wish I'd had that before. Now, speaking of the Exile's journey, at the very end of that, currently we have a quest line that either a goblin or a gnome, depending on your faction, will show you around the major city. Eventually you'll be given your first mount, and then you'll go and learn your first specialization, and then you'll go and have a well-earned drink. Currently, on live, this gnome or goblin will simply run off and you have to keep up with them. That is not the case in 10.1.5. Instead, they will get out a lovely little two-person mount, you will jump on, and they will drive you majestically through the capital city. I will say for me personally, again, this is a really handy change. Because I know where we're heading, I end up just running. I just run straight to this location and yeah. Normally means that the goblin, because I'm Horde, resets or gets glitched out and it's a nightmare. So just being able to jump on, they take you to one location because they've also moved where the stables is. The stables are actually located outside of where the specializations are which is a great change in my opinion, rather than going all the way up the hill. So yes, now you can have your drink, relax, for you have escaped the Exiles, but BFA is just beginning. And speaking of BFA, we have a really nice change, I would call it. This is one that we are used to having, or certainly back in the day, that actually disappeared. Quest givers being located inside of dungeons. Yes, in 10.1.5, Certain quest givers will be now heading inside the dungeons. They're not afraid anymore. They're going to step foot right at the entrance. They're not going to aggro anything, though. For any new players that have recently done time walking, you will know you've gone into these dungeons and there is a load of NPCs that are giving quests right by the door. Yes, this is coming back. And not only to BFA, this is coming to Shadowlands. This is also coming to Dragonflight as well. It would be lovely if we could also get like the weekly quests to work like that. You know, the IE Complete 4 Mythic dungeons, that would be great. Or if it just auto pops up when you head into a dungeon for the first time, because I never have this quest. I always end up having to turn around on my guildies going, can one of you link that? Because I never picked it up. And hopefully with this being added to Dragonfly, and obviously the last couple of expansions we've had, this means this is something that's going to be carried forward. Because personally, when I'm questing, a lot of times I like to just spam dungeons, and the dungeon quests tend to be a lot of XP, I don't want to go outside to get that quest, I just want to spam dungeon after dungeon, and I want to just have that quest there. I know it's a lazy thing, but this is me we're talking about, come on. Now there are a number of little things that are currently changed on PTR, but I can't tell whether they're intended, whether they're a bug, whatever it may be. For now, I've left them off the list, but if I read or see or get a reply from a ticket I put into Blizzard on the PTR, if I know that these are intended, I will of course update the list, let you all know. Yes, yeah, I did say I was hoping for a reply from a Blizzard support ticket. Are you serious? Yeah, okay, I know, but we can all hope. Every week we all <laughs> log in hoping that the vault isn't going to spit in our face, but um, yeah, it does. So, you know, I'm going to still keep hoping that the ticket will be answered. But I think that's enough for me, everyone. Thank you for watching this long. Subscribe if you want more of my random mumblings. Stay safe, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Ladies, everyone.